Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. The video I'm about to show you is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pour I did using a split cup. Um, now, I intended this pour to be for um, an embellishment. I was actually going to paint a hummingbird onto it. Um, I am still doing that, but the, on a different on a different um, video, on a different pour. Um, so this was going to be the base for my hummingbird. So you'll hear me refer a couple of times, I think, to a hummingbird or an embellishment. But the end result, I loved the painting, but it wasn't right for that embellishment. So I'm going to show you the full video anyway, because I love, love, love the result, but not for what I'd originally intended it for. Um, so a split cup pour um, with lovely colours. Here we go. If you watch one of my previous videos, you'll also just know that I've bought some split cups. I've got a five chamber, four chamber and three chamber. Now I've used the five chamber one. This is the three chamber. Um, so I'm really interested to see what kind of pour I can get with this. So I've decided to use this to create the base for this painting. So I want quite neutral colours, as I said. So I've got Montmartre Payne's Grey. I've got Montmartre Silver and I've got Pebio Iridescent Blue Blue Black. The reason I've got this kind of very dull blend of colours is because I want to have quite a neutral base and then I'm going to just put on the really bright coloured um, hummingbird afterwards. Um, mix The paints are mixed about two to one, pouring medium, which is PVA glue and water, to paint. Um, so if I show you what consistency that is, it's quite fluid. I want the colours to pour really nicely out the cup, really, really easily. Um, and they don't won't muddy because it's a split cup. So if you do a, a normal ring pour out of a, a normal cup, they will muddy. But because it's a split cup, they won't muddy in the same way. They might muddy slightly, but not not in the same way. And also, if these do muddy, they'll just make another version of this colour because they're all very similar colours, just different shades of it. Uh, just checking the consistency. Um, they were all fine earlier when I mixed them, but this iridescent seems to have just um, thickened up a little bit so I'm going to put silver in the middle and then put the other colours either side although if I do it like that then the iridescent it feels right you know actually I don't know what this will look like because I'm so new to split cups but it actually feels right to put the iridescent, the non-iridescent one in between the iridescent colours. I'm using a 40 centimetre square canvas. So I'm going to pour straight into the centre of the canvas and I'm just going to try and do um, a, just a simple ring pour. I might, I'm on the corner of a table, so I might find myself going round and then coming back again just to get some variation in the in the, in the split of colours. Otherwise, I'll end up with silver one side, blue and then the Payne's grey. So I think I might do that. I could put it onto a cake stand, but I don't want to spin it the whole way and I get a bit carried away when I'm well, got a, um, a, not a paint stand, a cake stand. Right. Here it goes, see what happens. Right, really, really pretty. I would say, I think the iridescent blue-black has kind of disappeared apart from there. But maybe that's just where it's blended between the two. Like the, that's why I can't see it. Um, I've got quite a lot of paint on the canvas, so that's great. So I'm not, 
I'm not going to put a flow extender down. I think I'm just going to try and stretch this out and know that my painting will end up being this central part. Um, now, unfortunately, I saw lots of lumps go through, um, which was obviously just I hadn't mixed the paint well enough, so which I'm a bit disappointed at because I thought I'd mixed it quite well. So as I'm doing this, there's one there. As I'm doing this, I'm looking out for lumps in my paint. Actually, I've just worked out why I've got lumps thinking about it because this Payne's Grey was the end of a tub and often if you use the ends there's bits of dried up paint so that's just my mistake my, my fault entirely right let's go, go off over this corner Oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. Wow, this is so different. Where's my bright crazy colours? They're not here, but I love it. I might just remove a little bit more of this bright silver so that it's a darker painting. I'm just tempted just to remove this corner nearer me or some of it. But I want to keep all these amazing stripes because they're absolutely beautiful. Wow. So as you know, I use all the time, I use really bright contrasting colours. What a change to do something just in very neutral colours. You've got the contrast between light and dark. Oh my goodness, I love this. Right, you can now see the iridescent blue black right in the centre there. This is really fascinating. Really happy with this. Wow. Right, let me get you in for a close up. I just can't get over these lines. They are absolutely stunning. So you've got the bright white and then you can see how it just fades. So it looks like ripples of sand on a beach. Absolutely gorgeous. I cannot believe um, that with just such basic colours, you can get something so, so pretty. Oh my goodness, can you see that? Oh, sorry. Actually, let's keep it, a, I've got times two. Can you see that sparkle? I hope this comes out on the foam. Wow, so, so sparkly. Um, the paint's grey, that will go very dark. It will look almost black. Um, and then the silver. 
So there, that's where there was some a lump in it. So having lumps in your paint just gives some irregularity. So for this sort of pour or this sort of embellishment, that's fine, no problem at all. But that would absolutely ruin a pour if it was just to be you know, a pour by itself. Um, so there's quite a few irregular patches. That doesn't bother me in the slightest, um, but obviously you'd rather avoid it. So um, make sure you mix your paints really well. Right, I'll be back when it's dry. So it's now dry, considering there's just three colours really, what, or two, even two colours, two tones, I'm absolutely in love with it. The composition is just amazing. It's just so simple, uh, but just so effective. So you've definitely got the ripples of, of wet sand there. Um, it do, it's just so pretty. You've got that, and then you've got the contrast of all these cells and these um, really irregular bits. Um, and then there's a bit of a zebra there. It looks like a more more black and white. Um, it's so simple, but I just think so effective. Um, it's really iridescent. Let me show you. Can you see the shine? Um, downside is you can see a few little lumps in the paint there, which, as I said at the beginning, is my mistake entirely for using an old bottle of paint. But look, you can really see, can you see the iridescent blue black in there? So it really is shining. So once I varnish this, um, it really will highlight that. You can see it in there as well. Um, the shine at the moment is just from the pouring medium, which is the PVA glue, so it leaves a shine. But once it's varnished, it will be even more glossy. Um, so yeah, so different for me. I'm not used to doing such simple colour palettes, but really, really like it. I hope everyone's well and having a nice weekend. Um, thanks so much for watching. Bye.